All right, today I'm going to be tackling the oil cooler on my 97 Ford. The oil cooler, especially whenever it's cold, these seals when they like to go bad, and it tends to dump out a lot of oil when it's cold, and then it kind of will stop and go away whenever it warms up. These usually, of course, show themselves in the middle of winter, but you can see underneath mine, it's all oily underneath here. Very common problem on these 7.3s. I'll show you where it is. So you can kind of see. Uh, right up there, that kind of cylindrical looking thing. That's the oil cooler. Now, I'm going to be you'll be able to see a little bit more. You can see it connects right up here. But to get things started, I'm going to go ahead and clean this off as well as I can. Simply because we're going to be working around oil and a lot of these very sensitive passages and the coolant. So the cleaner it is under here, the better. To reseal it, I got a set of oil cooler seals. I want to say these are like 40 or 60 bucks or so. These are really big heavy duty seals, and but I go figure they're for 7.3 oil cooler. So that's what we got to deal with. All right, now to make sure they don't short anything out during the cleaning process, I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect both batteries. Okay, to start this whole thing, I'm gonna drain the oil out of the truck because we are working with the oil cooler. And here it goes. And if you're working on this thing, you're trying to stay clean, give it up, but you're not going to. There it goes. So next up, I'm pulling out the block here. The drain pan underneath here, of course. Try my best to do it one-handed. Got a one and an eighth wrench, and I already broke it loose. So I can start pulling that out. I do have safety glasses on. Mm, yep, there it goes. And don't worry, there uh, it is. It's the purple antifreeze that I've got in here. So it, it's just too hard to see. Alright, so you got that thing here. Alright, so now to loosen up. It's now to loosen up the bolts themselves on the oil cooler. So there's actually three for the rear that I found. There's one on the right. Let's see, let me show you right there. Okay, I found all these to be 10 millimeter. I'm just using a deep well on a 3 8 drive. Now let's see if I can show you how to get where they are. They're kind of hard to get to. I end up mostly just feeling around for them. And I'll probably show you this a little better hopefully whenever I pull the whole thing off. But you got one right here. Okay, and then where's the other one? Oh, there's two right there. The lower one there is actually the 10 millimeter bolt. One up top looks like actually a drain plug or something. And then a little bit higher up, there is a third one. The hardest one of these bolts to get to is this third one right up, right up here. But I just got my deep well socket and extension so I can pull it out. Just keep pulling these bolts out. There goes one. It's not too terribly long. Give you an idea what you're looking at. Okay, got those three bolts out. They actually all look about look, look the same, which is nice. Pulling out this cooler rear section. So, all things free. Now, I think what I'm going to have to do is, I think this section here pulls straight out. So, I'm going to have to wiggle that around, and then I'll, I'll see if I can figure that out. That's going to be a little bit of a challenge. Yeah, okay, I finally got this back half of the wall cooler out. Really nasty. I'll clean it up real nicely. What the trick that I ended up using was I actually give it a good twist. So it was sitting on there, and hopefully I didn't damage it in here. I just put a little screwdriver in there, in the middle part of it, give me more leverage. And then what I do is I just give it a, a good solid twist, and that seemed to take it off nicely. But the next thing I got to do, as you can see, the the uh, rest of the cooler is still there and still making a mess. Okay, before you take off this front cover, one thing that I found that has been successful in releasing these things is to basically give it a good twist. And, well, it would have been a lot easier if I still had my front connector still in there because then it would have held it in place and instead I had to just kind of wedge it in place and jam it. But uh, this is actually pretty much a, a small car's I guess oil filter tool 
and I've been able to just take this thing and it, it, it's like the perfect size. And you can slip that around there and it allows you to twist it and then while you're twisting it pull it out and that will that releases it really well. But I finally got this thing out. Okay, underneath the front of the truck and you can kind of see right there in the middle right by the radiator hose that's going to be one bolt and then there's another one a little bit higher up. Okay well it's hard to see where the other one is but it's right up I want to see my index finger there. It's right up around there and you know you'll hopefully be able to see it better on where I pull it off. It looks like there's just two bolts for this one and I think that sounds right. So I'm gonna use this 10 millimeter wrench I've got I got these gear wrenches. They are really handy. See I'll just put that on there and use that so got that little radiator hose. Got like the liquors. Oh, this is a really tight fit. Okay. So I got lucky. Well, I know a lot of people say they had to take off some of the covers and some of that to get these front bolts off. But I said, you know, challenge accepted. And now you can see, I got the bolt off. Now you, can, you actually have a good shot. Now you can see where it is and everything. In fact, I wonder if I can pull it. Yeah, see, there it is. There it is. Pull that off. And I was actually able to go from the top of the engine to leave it there so you can see it. Okay, looking down below. My wrench is way down here. But you can get some leverage by going from the top. That's my wrenches. Get those two bolts out and then fiddle around and get the thing off. And so I can show you guys. So this is the front cover. And it was kind of sitting on the engine. Kind of like, like this. Okay. And so you can see there's a bolt up top. And there's another bolt on the bottom. That you have to get off. Okay. See it on the back side. And then we go over here to the front cover. Or the rear I should say. I need to clean this up. But this thing sat in the engine, bolted on like this. Okay, so if you're looking up, it's going to be kind of looking something like so. But you can see you've got those three bolts there that hold it in one, two, three, and there's that middle one right there. That was the hardest to get to. Now, the actually the hardest part about this whole process, I think, was actually just getting the oil cooler itself out. The bolts weren't too bad, but the let's see it was that lower the bottom bolt without taking off that radiator hose i had very limited clearance so i ended up using a couple of wrenches and then a socket and it was just it was all over pain but i'm gonna get these suckers cleaned up really nicely you know as clean as i can possibly get them and i'm gonna clean up the gasket mating surfaces really well on here as well and then we'll hopefully stick it all back together Okay, well, I'm pulling off these seal seams, so pull the oil cooler, and let's see if I can focus. See, that one just cracked right off. So, you know, no wonder this thing was leaking. Hit these up with some dish soap and water. See, so there's seal in there, another seal in here, and I'll press a look around and see if I can get all these seals out. But we got one up here on the oil cooler. There's another lower, and then. Got a seal that got stuck still inside and then of course we got some cleaning up here to do some more not too bad right, that. and then there's probably another one. Yeah, another seal in there so I count like four seals there total four o-rings and then we'll have those of course those gaskets as well so I'm going to get those off okay you went ahead and I cleaned everything up really nicely and this is where you really make or break it if you don't clean these things well enough, then they're just going to leak right again. So I ended up using some gasoline and got a lot of the grease and everything off. And then just knocked it all down with soap and water, then blew it all out with an air compressor. I stuck the seals on the oil cooler. They just kind of slide on there. Make sure these gasket mating surfaces, you know, those O-ring surfaces, are really nice and clean. That's uh, where they seal up. I just ended up replacing the seals that I took off. And so hopefully that should be everything. I actually have two extra seals. They're exactly these black ones. Don't know what they go to, but I just figure, you know, maybe there's different styles. But I'm at least going to put back on what I took off. Another thing is, i got to clean up the gasket mating surface on the block itself. So I'm just going to use some, you know, like a gasket scraper and some brake parts cleaner. Let's see if I can just spray that on a paper towel and 
you just have to get all cleaned up and also clean up these bolts too just to make sure they'll go back together nice and easy. Alright, I got the gasket surfaces nice and cleaned up. I'm going to go ahead and see about installing all this. Come on now. Get through there. Okay. Well, it's going to sit like that. I think. I might have to cut you guys off the video just for this. Sorry. Alright, guys, I finally think I got it on. I apologize for the lack of video. That was a royal pain to do. You can see those two bolts right there in the little cooler. The, okay, so this top one you can get. I'm just using an extension. You can see I get, can get on there. Just use a ratchet like that. Now the lower one, let me show you how I got that. I end up using just regular old box end wrench. Take a look. This is where that other lower bolt is. I'm just using an open end wrench. These gear wrenches that I have actually work pretty well too for ratcheting. You can just barely get enough clearance through there. You can see that you can tighten that bolt. It really is a pain. The hardest part is really leaving some oil in here still. Just trying to keep it clean and trying to get the gasket and everything that made up. I wonder some like gasket, some high tight gasket sealant or something that would work better. I don't know, but I'm just glad it's in. Okay, the next thing I'm gonna need to do is get this oil cooler and actually set it in. What I'll probably do is put a little bit of grease or oil or something on these seals to help them slide in better. And then I should be able to slide it in to that, I guess that block's already made it in to the engine block itself, and hopefully that'll work. All right. Another thing to be careful of is with the orientation of this thing, this oil cooler when you get it in. Now, it's got these little marker tabs, as you can see. Here. Go in. I can't tell. Okay, so that just needs to be pushed in. No. Okay, well, we finally got the oil cooler in. You can see it right down there. Nice, clean, and everything. I really hope the seals hold up, but uh, I haven't checked, to, checked it out yet. But the hardest part is getting everything put together. And what I mean by that is you know, squishing these two sections together because remember, it was pressed fit when we pulled it apart. Anyways, so what we had to do was using a pry bar and a big wood block, which you can kind of do is with the other end, let's see, it was, we had this rear end already put in. That was actually pretty easy to do that off the vehicle. But the front end was the one we were having trouble with. What we were able to do is just put a wood block between uh, this little section right here and the little component itself. And we were able to kind of force it onto onto the cooler and get everything put together. And that, that worked. Well, I finally got that oil cooler all in and everything. And it doesn't seem really good. I'll help you like the video and everything like that. And hopefully the video will help you out with resealing your oil cooler. And if you have any questions, just leave a comment in the comment box and I'll see if I can respond to those for you. And, and it's, a, it's a dirty task, but it's really nice to have a 7 oil cooler that works like it should. In the meantime, y'all have a good one.